I've been using Bolt for nearly a year now to build everything from websites to full stack applications. And there are five things that I wish somebody had told me before I started using it on day one. And from my experience, a lot of people are using tools like Bolt in completely the wrong way. And they're missing a bunch of hidden features that aren't obvious when you start using it that can help you avoid going round and round in circles with bugs and spending hours trying to fix your broken app. And here's the thing, the last tip on this list actually allows you to get around one of Bolt's biggest perceived limitations entirely. And it's completely hidden if you didn't know about it. If you don't know me, my name is Chris and for the last 15 years I've been designing apps and advising startups on product and design. And with that said, let's help you go from a Bolt beginner to a Bolt pro. Build great product. Build great product. Build great product. So this is the latest version of Bolt, it's Bolt version 2, and there are a few things that they've just released which make this tool so much more powerful, including the ability to use clawed code directly in Bolt, the fact that you get a super based database and authentication built into every project with Bolt version 2, and the ability to deploy your app via Netlify directly from Bolt as well. And these are all built-in services from companies that deliver best-in-class solutions for database authentication, deployment, and also the coding agent. But I'm not here to talk about Bolt version 2's features. What I do want to talk about and what I do want to show you is the five things that you can do to unlock the potential in Bolt and to also enable you to build much better applications, avoid going around in error loops forever and ever, and also just to give you a much more enjoyable experience when you're actually using Bolt. So the first thing I want to talk about here is in this little plus menu and this is tip number one so if you don't know it and if you haven't clicked on this before which you might not have done it's completely fair it's just a plus icon it's relatively hidden I always find that from a design point of view it's frustrating for me when I see like some of the most powerful features being hidden behind these menus but there is a lot of options here already so I can see why they've done it the first tip is this enhance prompt option in this menu here. So if I put in a prompt here, and let's just say, let's build a Toludist app for busy parents to help them spend more time with their kids by planning their week in advance and giving them a clear way of organizing family activities. Now you might be starting with a prompt like this if you're using Bolt for the first time, or you might even be starting with something less. You might just say, let's build a to-do list app for busy parents. And the enhance prompt option here is a really good way to give Bolt much clearer direction when it's building your app. The best results that you get from these AI app building tools like Bolt is when you're really, really clear and specific about what you wanna do in the tool. And so let's click Enhance Prompt and see what it does. And so you can see here, it's writing out a much clearer prompt that has all of these things that you would never put in your first prompt. And it's figuring out what features it should build, how it should construct this app, what the user journey is, what the objectives are, what the target users are, what the required features to design are, the deliverables, the constraints, all of this. Now, I will say that you should take this with a pinch of salt because sometimes it doesn't always give it clear enough instructions to actually build the app. And so you can see here, we've got your product manager tasked with designing a comprehensive to-do list application specifically for busy parents. So I'm just going to put designing and building a your project manager and senior developer. And I've got designing and building a comprehensive to-do list application specifically for busy parents. And at the end here, instead of having this, I'm just going to say build each feature to directly address the goal of helping parents spend more quality time with their children. So just from writing that one sentence prompt and then clicking enhancing prompt, what I've got here is a much stronger starting point for my app. And if I submit this, I'm much more likely to get a better result from building my app in Bolt. And so that is tip number one. And you can continue to use enhance prompt as you're working through your app. It's still here in this plus menu. So even if you say add a progress tracker and then you click enhance prompt, again, it's gonna enhance that prompt for your app in the context of your app. So we've got here this enhanced prompt that's being written down here. And you can enhance the prompt from the menu here. So you can continue doing this as you're building your app. Now, I wouldn't recommend this for simple changes, but if you're building a new feature, this is a great way to provide a really detailed and concise prompt to Bolt that's actually gonna improve the features that you're building in your app. And I would always recommend 
thinking through what you want to actually build first and making sure you're giving as much detail in your first prompt that you put in here with Bolt and then clicking enhance prompt rather than giving some vague instructions. But Bolt should be really good at enhancing the prompt in the context of the app that you're building. So it will kind of enhance that prompt to align with the features that you're building in your application. And this feature is only going to improve over time as well. Now for the second tip, I've jumped over to a different project here in Bolt that I have been building as part of the course in my community. And the second tip here is really to bookmark versions of your app as you go at key milestones that you want to be able to remember and go back to and all you have to do every time that Bolt builds your app you get this little build kind of card here in the chat and you have this little bookmark icon now if you bookmark that from there and you click on the drop down from the project name you can then go to version history here and version history will basically have all of the versions of your app that you've created and then it will have the bookmarked versions of the app at the top here as well and you can easily click on these and then basically restore a version of the app from any point and this version history is a really good way to kind of mark key milestones in your app that you're building and also to be able to jump back to previous versions if you've kept on going down a chat which gets incredibly long and it can't fix an error or you get stuck on something basically every time you build a feature and then test it and then want to start on something new you can bookmark the version after you've successfully built the feature and then you can always go back to the version history and restore that version if you want to go back to that version and the third tip here which is incredibly helpful as well is just another thing from this plus menu down here in the bottom left that you might not know about so once you've started building you can actually click this plus and then open the prompt library now this prompt library allows you to do a few different things but most importantly allows you to create specific prompts that you can reuse in your own prompt library and it also allows you access to a bunch of other really common prompts prompts that you might use for your app. So we've got this prompt here, for example, for dark mode implementation. And if I click that, it will add the prompt in here to Bolt. So these are just common prompts that you might use in your app that have been created by the Bolt team to help you build really common features that a lot of people build without having to write out your own prompt. And you can just go into the prompts library by clicking that plus, clicking open prompt library, and then adding your prompt in here from that list of prompts. And you can also go into the prompt library and create your own prompt to add that to your prompt library as well. And this is a really easy way of just doing those things. If you're building multiple apps and you're doing the same thing over and over again, you might wanna create a custom prompt for something that you're doing regularly. For example, adding payments or setting up a database in a certain way or adding dark mode or anything like that. It just makes doing those common tasks really, really straightforward and simple. The full fourth tip here for working <clears throat> the fourth tip here for working with Bolt and making your project even easier is also hidden in the settings. So if you go into this settings drop down here, click all product and click the knowledge link here. Basically then what you get is the instructions for Bolt for this project. Now by default, it has these preloaded instructions here, basically for all designs I ask you to make, have them be beautiful, not cookie cutter, make web pages that are true, fully featured and worthy for production. By default, this template supports JSX syntax, Tailwind, CSS classes, React hooks, Lucid React for icons. Do not install other packages for UI themes, icons, etc., unless absolutely necessary or I request them. What you can do here is basically add your own instructions to this project. So if you really wanted to, you could add your full PRD, your project requirements document, if you've generated one. If you don't know what a project requirement document is, it's basically a document that would outline all the specs of your project. And I would always recommend not using the PRD as your first prompt. But if you have the ability to, like you do in Bolt and like you do in other coding tools, to be able to add your PRD as kind of a knowledge for context in your project, what this is gonna allow Bolt to do is it's gonna be able to reference this knowledge every time you send a request to it. And so by adding your PRD into this project knowledge section, you can basically give Bolt the entire context of the app that you're building. And every time you build a feature, it's gonna be able to reference that PRD for you. Now, if you wanna keep the default instructions in here as well, what you can do is just do enter and then add your PRD underneath here. But this is a really good way of helping Bolt understand exactly what you're building so that you can build features more accurately as you go. And it also gives Bolt the context of all of the different kind of the end state 
of the app that you want to build whilst you're adding all these features on top of it. Quick break in the episode to talk about my community for people who are building apps with AI and want to actually launch their app and get real customers. It's called the AI App Builders Academy. So if you're building an AI app with Bolt or Lovable or Cursor or any of these AI tools and you actually want to make a profit and launch your app, then this is the community for you. Inside, you'll get access to a community of other builders as well as my 30-day app course helping you go from idea to app to a profitable launch in just 30 days. You'll also get access to weekly calls with live workshops and training as well as all of my startup frameworks and resources and 24-7 support from the community to help you answer any any questions or problems you're having with building and launching your AI app. So if you're building an app with AI and you actually want to make a profit and launch your app, then head over to school.com forward slash AI apps to find out more. I'll see you there. And then finally, for the fifth prompt here, which I think really gets around one of the huge limitations that people think Bolt has, which is this continual chat context here, is just being able to type forward slash clear. And this basically clears the context. Now, even that might seem a little bit ambiguous, like what does that even do? The reason why clearing context is important is because as you're building in Bolt or any other coding tool, a lot of the time, the coding agent here on the left in this chat will always be referencing your entire previous conversation in order to understand what it needs to build next. And the best way to improve the features that you're building, to improve the quality of the code that Bolt is writing, and to improve the output that you're gonna get and reduce the amount of errors that you're gonna get, is actually to clear the chat history every time you start building a new feature. So as you build something, you wanna break things down feature by feature in your app. And every time you start building a new feature, you wanna clear that context. And so you can see through this chat here, I'm doing forward slash clear quite a lot. And this basically gives, I say quite a lot, but there's only one time there. There we go, we've got forward slash clear there and we've got forward slash clear there as well. So I'm doing it fairly regularly, basically kind of like every feature that I'm building. And this basically gives Bolt, it gives the coding agent here fresh context. So it's starting from scratch every time it's building a new feature. Why this is important is because if you suddenly start doing something different, that's different to your previous chat history, coding agents can get confused and they might try and think like, well, he's trying to do something different here, but also I'm referencing all this old stuff that I built. So let's try and do a weird kind of mix of the two and then change a bunch of features in different places that actually the user didn't ask for because I think that it's related to this previous context when actually they just wanted to start from scratch. So do this all the time. People think this is a limitation in Bolt and other tools like this, but really you can just do forward slash clear and that will do Basically, I've cleared the context, clears your chat history, you start from fresh context, and now you can build your new feature. Do this every time you build something new, build a feature, make any amends or fix any errors that you need to, and then clear the chat context again. And just do this, get in the habit of doing this regularly, and this will make it so much easier to continue to build features on top of your app that you're working on. So that was my five things I wish I knew before I had started using Bolt. And these things are gonna massively improve the quality of the app that you're building, and also reduce the number of errors that you're getting when you're using Bolt. So you don't have to keep going round and round and round trying to fix things that are broken in your app. And you also don't have to worry about your coding agent changing unnecessary things that you don't want it to. Now it might still do this every now and then but it's going to reduce this by like 10 times compared to just sending off basic prompts and getting rubbish results back so to recap the five points you can click on the plus icon and enhance your prompt before you build any big features or before you build your app with your first prompt you can bookmark any key versions of your app and then restore them from any point in your build at a later time if you're trying to build a big feature this is a really good thing to do before you build the feature so you can jump back to before you started building that feature to a working version of your app without having to worry about going too far down the chat and then never being able to get back to something that actually worked. Tip three was to use the prompt library from the plus icon to actually do a bunch of really common prompts and also to save your own prompts that you're doing over and over again. If you're using the same prompt again and again or you're going through multiple projects, you can create your own prompt in the prompt library that way as well. Tip four was to add in your PRD or your own knowledge for your project into the knowledge section in your settings just to 
give Bolt the overall context of the full app that you're building. And then the fifth tip here, which is my favorite, is just to make sure that you clear the chat history, you clear the context by using that forward slash clear command in the chat every single time you build a big feature or if you're switching context to doing something completely different in your app. This improves the quality of results that you get from the coding agent by so many times. It just makes it so much easier to work with Bolt and any of these AI coding tools. Hopefully those will help you to build a much better app. And if you are building an app with AI, don't forget you can check out my community over at school.com forward slash AI apps or join my accelerator program over at buildgreatproducts.com forward slash accelerator. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Build great products. Build great products.